Hey, what's happening guys? Today we're gonna talk about PTFE AN hose. Basically everything you ever wanted to know. Sizing, how to assemble it, how to pressure check it, what is it good for, what are the pressures good for, all that stuff. So we're gonna start with the very basics, so let me set you up over the bench and we're gonna dive right into this. All right, so over here at the bench, we're gonna start with the very basics. What are AN fittings? AN fittings stand for Army Navy fittings. And what the US military did in World War II is they came out with a standardized type of fitting that could be used on multiple different pieces of equipment. So if there was an infield repair that needed to be done, you could use anybody's fitting. You could take a fitting from manufacturer A and a fitting from manufacturer B would work correctly like it's supposed to. Now these fittings that I'm dealing with are made of aluminum and what Hot Rodders found out in the 50s and 60s is these fittings were great for race vehicles and sort of hot rods because they are so light and fairly easy to assemble and you can take them apart, put it back together basically as much as you want as long as you don't gall up the threads and they're nearly infinitely reusable. So the fittings and the hoses are set up with dash numbers. And what those dash numbers mean is essentially the size of the hose in sixteenths of an inch. So for example, it's real common to hear about dash eight hose. Dash eight hose is half inch hose because eight over 16 simplified is half inch. So a dash 16 hose is a one inch hose. A dash 32 hose would be a two inch hose. Um, so when you hear people talk about the dash sizes, like if they have a, a dash eight fuel line, that's a half inch fuel line. Okay, so that is the sizing of the fittings and sizing of the hose. The next thing we're gonna talk about is actually how the hose attaches to the fitting. So this section right here can vary depending on the type of hose that you're using and the type of fitting that you're using. In addition, certain hose is only compatible with certain type of fitting. So there is push lock, which takes a push lock hose and a push lock fitting. There is standard AN, which is essentially like rubber hose with a stainless steel braid on the outside. There's also AN crimp, whereas the, the outside, this nut down here at the bottom, actually kind of crimps on like a hydraulic fitting. Um, the one that we're gonna be mostly dealing with in this video and the one that really to me is the only one you should really use is gonna be PTFE. Um, the reason I say that is first of all, PTFE is pretty much impervious to any automotive fluid. Um, you can use it for E85, E98, methanol, gasoline, uh, power steering, air conditioning, transmission fluid, engine oil, does not matter. The PTFE will handle it. Um, in addition to that, the PTFE hose is rated for a much higher pressure than the other hoses out on the market. So this Dash 10 PTFE hose is rated to about 1000 PSI. So I could probably use this for a power steering system. You could use this for air conditioning line. There isn't anything on the car that you couldn't use this for. Now, in addition to the pressure resistance, it also has a higher level of temperature resistance. So traditional AN line or rubber hose is really rated to about 100 PSI at about 200 degrees. The PTFE line will handle 400 degrees at about 1000 PSI. So as you can see, you know, I'm using this line for an oil cooler and there's a pretty good chance that motor oil is going to get over 200 degrees. So in my application, the only thing that I'm going to even consider is going to be PTFE because it's the only thing rated for the type of heat that I'm going to throw at it. In addition to that, the PTFE has plenty of pressure overhead that I know that this line isn't going to fail um, due to a cold start. You know, typically when you start a cold engine, oil pressure is super high because the oil's real thick. So I know this line will handle the pressure. I know it'll handle the heat. Let me show you how to assemble one. All right, so the first thing you gotta do is figure out what length the hose needs to be. So what I'll do is I'll take the end off the hose, take the, the end off, 
take the ferrule out and that'll just leave you the, the nipple on the fitting. And then all you're gonna do is take the end of the hose and push that onto the fitting. Make sure it's fully seated like it would be when it's assembled. So now you can take your hose and route it where it needs to be routed. So do the exact same thing to the other end. Take the end of the fitting off on the other end of the hose. And let's say like if I wanted to make a hose from here to here, I could literally just bend it like this, mark the length that's gonna be right about in here somewhere. So I could put a mark right there, cut it to length and assemble it. So you can dry fit everything before you, you know, do your final assembly. So you can verify the length of the hose is correct, the routing's correct, you've got enough room for expansion, contraction, vibration, things like that. So get your, uh, get your hose routing figured out first and establish your length using this method. All right, so once you get your hose marked with where you need to cut it, next thing you need to do is take some tape and I prefer masking tape. Um, it's just a little bit cleaner, comes off easier than uh, electrical tape. It's not quite as gummy. And you're gonna wrap that in some tape. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna keep that braid from uh, basically just flaring out and getting it to the point that you can't get the nut on this. So what you're gonna do is I use a die grinder, come in here and cut it with a die grinder. Um, there's all sorts of tools to cut this stuff. Die grinder is going to be the, honestly the most convenient. Um, there's stuff out there that's like a big pair of wire cutters. Basically, they come in here and they'll you know cut the line with basically a giant set of wire cutters. Um, the the downside to those is they kind of kink the line, kind of crimp it, close it a little bit. You got to go in here and open it back up. Um, but the downside to using a cutoff wheel is a lot of the junk from the cutoff wheel is going to end up inside the hose. So let me show you. Now, it doesn't matter what you're using to cut the hose, but it is imperative that you cut the hose straight. If you cut this thing on an angle, you're going to cause yourself sealing problems that we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, the next thing is, if you're going to use an abrasive wheel like I am, there's going to be a ton of junk inside the hose. Let me show you. See all that garbage, guys? That is what you do not want going into your fuel system, your oil cooler, whatever you're plumbing to this. Try to make sure you get all that garbage out of there. Um, obviously, because this is just Teflon line, most of that is you know Teflon. But uh, again, you really don't want this stuff going into your engine, your fuel injectors, that sort of thing. Um, a lot of people out there will just Cut the line, stab the, uh, you know, put the ends on it, send it on its way, and you never even notice that, you know, you have all this garbage inside the hose. So flush it out with a brake clean, compressed air, something. But if you're going to use something abrasive to cut this like I did, make sure you clean the inside of the hose. All right, so now that you have the hose cut to the length that you need, take one of your fittings, take the nut off the end. Set that off to the side. Set the ferrule off to the side. Take the nut. The nut is gonna get pushed onto the hose, like so. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take the ferrule, and the ferrule is gonna go over top of the braid, and the, the Teflon is gonna end up inside the ferrule. So the braid goes over the top, the Teflon goes inside. So you're basically gonna push this on here however you can, to make this fit. Now, if you look here, I still have some tape on here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna remove this tape at this point because I've left the tape on here, guys, and typically what happens is you'll push this ferrule on, it pushes the braid down, and some of the tape pops out the bottom of the fitting, so you end up seeing the tape outside the fitting, which really isn't what you want. So you take the ferrule and just push the ferrule on as far as you can. And this is why it's imperative that that cut is 100% straight on the end of your uh, on the end of your hose. Because if you cut this on an angle, this ferrule is never going to seat right, and it's never going to seal. So you take the the ferrule, push that on as far as you can. So this picture is going to give you a better indication of what you need to be looking for here. 
what you're looking for is you need the edge of the aluminum to meet the edge of the white Teflon liner. So you need to get it to the point that you cannot push the aluminum any further onto the line. It needs to be fully seated. And at that point, you can continue assembling your fitting. Once that ferrule stops against the edge of the Teflon hose on the inside, then you can take your, your actual fitting and push it inside the Teflon over top of the ferrule and the nut goes on just like that. So what I try to do is I'll start these by hand and you get it as far as you can by hand and then I'm gonna move this in the vise If you just do this with a bench vise with the regular flat jaws, you'll end up marring up the fitting if you're worried about that. Um, just get it in here snug. You don't have to go crazy on it or anything. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a wrench and turn this hex and spin the, the actual fitting into the nut. Now there's people out there that'll tell you you gotta use aluminum wrenches to put these together. Yes, you can. Um, it will keep it from marring. If you're highly concerned with how these fittings look, look into a set of aluminum wrenches. Um, for most people, the steel ones work fine as long as they have some sort of flat jaw in it and the jaw is clean. Um, some of the ones, some of the wrenches out there that have like the, the serrations on the inside of the uh, opened end, like I'm not picking on Snap-on, but Snap-on is probably the prime example, um, you know, to grip the grip the fastener, those will chew up the AN fitting because the wrench is so much harder than the aluminum. So when you're tightening this down, what you're going to do is you're going to go basically as far as you can until it starts to get snug. And I've had some of these where you have a gap between the nut and the fitting, and I've had other ones where you just have to run it down till they're both tight, and that's how they seal. Um, depending on who the fitting manufacturer is, it's going to depend on what that clearance is. Because what I found, guys, is some of these cheaper fittings that are out on the market, the, the production tolerances on the fittings really aren't that great. So some of them you have to tighten down more than others to make them work correctly. Um, there's just a lack of consistency um, in the fitting itself. So it just depends on whose fitting that you're buying is really gonna depend on how tight you're gonna make this thing. All right, so this is the line I just made. And the next thing I wanna do before I actually, you know, just thread this line on and run it, I wanna pressure test it and make sure that this thing is actually gonna hold the pressure that I need it to. Um, especially on this oil cooler installation that I'm doing, I really don't want, you know, the, the fitting just blowing off the end and just dumping all the oil from my engine out onto the ground because the engine will empty the sump in about 10 seconds. After about 30 seconds with no oil, I'm gonna need an engine. So it's absolutely imperative that, you know, these two connections are gonna do what I need them to do. So in order to test that, what I have here is a pressure test kit. This is from Speedway Motors. I'll link it down in the description. Um, as you can see, it comes with multiple fittings to do multiple different size AN hose, but the really, it's kind of self-explanatory. So the way this works is one end gets a plug, the other end has an air fitting on it. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna tighten both ends up, pressurize this with shop air at like 100 PSI, and then dunk it under some water and see if you have any air bubbles. I highly recommend doing this, guys, because if you're, I don't care what you're building, whether it's fuel hose or oil hose or anything like that, you cannot have a failure in this line. You do not want this line to leak, um, especially with a fuel line. This is the easiest and quickest way to test it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go get a bucket of water, pressurize this line, dunk it in the water, see if we have any air bubbles and see if it's ultimately, if it's leaking. Okay, so I've got my line, got my bucket of water. I'm just gonna take an air chuck. Throw some air at this thing. And that has 
just under 100 pounds on it. And you take that and just set that in your bucket of water. And when you first put this in here, obviously you're gonna have some bubbles come out. There's no way around it. Just kind of wiggle it around a little bit. And then just let that thing sit in there. I usually give them a couple minutes, make sure that you don't have any, uh, you know, a constant stream of bubbles coming out. So once you've verified one end's good, flip it over, do the same thing. Pretty, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Like I said, it's gonna take a second. It takes a second to get the air out of the fitting itself, you know, and all those little cracks and crevices and stuff, but if you leave it underwater for about two minutes, you'll know, especially with 100 PSI on it. All right, guys, so this hose looks good. I didn't see any leaks in it. Um, one thing to note is this kit that I have will work on basically any AN hose. I don't care if it's push lock, crimp, traditional AN, PTFE, does not matter. Um, this will work with any of that stuff. So like I said, I'll link this kit down in the description if you wanna actually pressure check your hose, which I highly recommend. All right guys, so I hope you guys got something out of that. Personally, I've never had a huge issue putting together PTFE fittings, but once you figure out how to do it and figure out how to pressure test it, you can pretty much guarantee that you're not gonna have any huge problems. Um, one thing to note about the PTFE fittings and the hose is try not to mix and match the manufacturers of the fittings and the hoses. So what I'm saying is um, if you're building a fuel system or like in this case, I'm doing an oil cooler, buy the fittings and the hoses from the same manufacturer. That way you know that they're compatible with one another. Um, I've seen issues with other people. I've personally never had problems, but I've seen issues that other people have had where they'll take like a Fergola fitting and they'll try to use it with Earl's hose and it just doesn't want to seal, doesn't want to work right. And it just has to do with Earl's and Fergola just have two different production tolerances. Just something to keep in the back of your mind, guys. Like I said, I'll have links in the description um, to the fittings, uh, to the vice jaws, to the cutters, uh, to the test kit, and you know anything else that you would need to uh, be able to assemble your own PTFE fittings. As always, guys, if you guys like the video, hit like. If you wanna see more content, go down and hit subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys.